Good evening um, to everyone on the call. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Avalon Technologies Extend, a warm welcome to our Q2 FI24 earnings call. I would like to express our sincere gratitude for your continued support and interest in our company during the past few months. Before we dive into the financials, let me provide a quick introduction to Avalon Technologies, particularly for those who are joining us for the first time. Avalon Technologies has established itself as a key player in electronics manufacturing services with a global reach. Our journey began in 1997 with the vision of introducing top-tier electronics manufacturing in India. Today, we take pride in our leadership in high-mix, flexible volume manufacturing, serving a diverse range of industrial verticals, especially in intricate, integrated solutions that require significant engineering expertise. We currently operate across 32 manufacturing, sorry, 12 manufacturing facilities in India and the United States. We are also adding two new manufacturing units in India. Our key differentiators are, one, vertical integration. We are a one-stop shop offering a true box build solution that involves PCB design, new product development, cable assembly, sheet metal, plastics, magnetics, testing and logistics. We do end-to-end -end development from PCB design to manufacturing of final product. Two, our global presence, both in terms of manufacturing presence as well as our customer base. Three, optimal mix of today's established industries like industrial, rail, aerospace, auto, medical, and tomorrow's emerging industries like clean energy. Now, moving on to our business performance, in line with our prior discussions, our H1 results were tempered by the challenging economic conditions in the U.S. Despite our robust do domestic demand and acquisition of marquee global customers, our India growth story is promising with a 16% increase in revenue and 26% expansion in our order book. In fact, our Indian manufacturing operation constituting 75% of our business achieved a robust 8.7% path during H1. However, the ongoing difficulties in the U.S. market have resulted in a decline in our U.S. operations, leading to losses that have temporarily overshadowed the strong performance of our Indian operations. Avalon excels in its global outreach with over 50% of our revenue originating from the U.S. This has allowed us to gain a deep understanding of operating in a globally interconnected economy. Our presence in export markets has given us a competitive edge historically. However, it exposes us to regional economic headwinds like what we are experiencing today. The Indian and U.S. markets are currently operating in remarkably different environments and their respective performances reflect that. During H1, our Indian market revenue grew by 16%, while our U.S. market revenue declined by 14%. On that note, I'd like to highlight the hybrid nature of our operations. Since inception, we have been firmly believed in our ability to capitalize on a unique combination of Indian cost arbitrage and global margin profiles. At the same time, our U.S. manufacturing presence plays a critical role as it acts as a gateway to acquiring customers within the U.S. market. Having said that, presently, 75% of our revenues are manufactured in India and 25% is manufactured in the U.S. This 75% India manufacturing segment continues to generate industry-leading profitability reporting around 8.7% fat during H1 FI24. In contrast, 25% of U.S. manufacturing segment is dealing with, with the effects of economic slowdown in the United States and is posting a loss. Current circumstances prompted us to seek greater efficiencies. As highlighted in our last conference call, we have taken proactive steps in response to short-term challenges in the U.S. market. These actions encompass two, measured, two measures concerning our U.S. operations. One, 
optimizing product allocation from a U.S. plant to a India plant. Two, rationalizing costs in our U.S. operations. We have been diligently working in these measures over the past few months and already seeing some positive results. To illustrate in terms of rationalization of U.S. costs, we have already achieved half of, what, of our targeted improvements and the remaining changes are expected to be seen in the next three to six months. The outcomes of these measures will gradually become more apparent in our upcoming quarters. <coughs> While discussing our U.S. operations, I would like to take some time to highlight the crucial function carried out by our U.S. manufacturing presence. It functions as a front-end streamlining customer onboarding and serves as a beachhead to expand our market footprint. Additionally, it empowers us to position ourselves better from the perspective of the Inflation Reduction Act, a substantial $390 billion initiative advocating adoption of clean energy utilization. These elements underpin the significance of our U.S. operations in the overarching narrative of Avalon's growth. While we are optimizing our U.S. operating costs, our organization is filled with enthusiasm as we recognize the significant decadal market opportunity that lies before us. Now transitioning to an update on the new business we have secured. In summary, our order book stands at uh, rupees 1,244 crores as of September 30, 2023, reflecting a 13% growth from June 2023. These are orders are expected to be fulfilled over a span of 12 to 14 months. Additionally, we also secured contracts and letters of intent for an additional 750 crores with execution timelines spanning uh, two to four years. We are excited to share progress with our two significant clean energy clients, one in, in the U.S. solar inverter and battery system sector, the other in the hydrogen electrolyzer domain. Both partnerships are on the verge of production set to commence in Q4 FY24. Our aerospace wiper blade assembly project in India is advancing smoothly. We anticipate commencing product delivery in the second quarter of this year. Additional to this, our aerospace uh, cable projects have been approved for production into next year. In terms of new customer acquisitions, we are excited to share that we have secured a large contract from one of India's innovative EV manufacturer who will entrust us with the manufacturing of the charger and data transmission systems. Additionally, we have also, as some major wins in the U.S., they are diversified across verticals. These include video surveillance systems for industrial applications, grid flexibility systems for clean energy, heat transfer products for, for the automotive sector, medical equipment, and residential ventilation solutions. Our role as a strategic partner to our customer is evident in our ability to retain all our customers in the U.S. even, even during these trying times. We are also excited to announce that CDAC has extended Avalon Technologies an opportunity to receive the transfer of technology, or TOT, as part of the National Supercomputing Mission for Rudra 1. India's indigenous server program. Avalon Group has been a long-standing collaborator with CDAC within the National Supercomputing Mission and, is, and has actively contributed to the PCB design engineering of the Rudra 2 liquid-cooled server platform currently in development at CDAC. When we want to capitalize on these decadal opportunities, it is essential that we do not lose sight of the forest for the trees and, and plant the seeds of tomorrow. We are preparing our organization for the years of growth ahead as a significant step in this direction. We are pleased to introduce uh, Sri Ram Vijay Raghavan, our new group chief operating officer. He brings valuable operational experience from his previous roles in Wheel India, Wheels India, Caterpillar and Hertz, as well as strategic experience from his previous position at McKinsey. We are also strengthening our business development team in the U.S. by welcoming about three seasoned professionals 
each boasting over two decades of experience in the industry, in the EMS industry. As previously highlighted, achieving a full year revenue growth target depends on the resurgence of the U.S. market. While our performance in the Indian market remains robust, Currently, we lean towards, towards favoring the lower end of our initially provided guidance with a negative bias. While we acknowledge short-term challenges, we maintain confidence in our strong underlying fundamentals and remain committed to achieving a stated long-term goal of 25 to 30% revenue CAGR over the next three years. To sum up, Avalon stands strong, navigating adversity with resilience and focusing on building a business of profitable growth in the long term rather than the growth at any cost in the short term. Before I hand over the floor to our CFO, we appreciate your continued trust and support as we work together to realize our vision. Arvind. Thank you, KB, and uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining the call today. I would like to start this uh, we're talking about the critical issues influencing the company's performance, which KB had touched upon. Again, I'd like to reiterate them. These include the headwinds in the U.S. economy, which has led to a significant decline in sales from the U.S. market. Uh, number two, our unique hybrid business model, which involves export-oriented sales with manufacturing facilities, both in India and U.S.A. While our export-driven model typically yields higher margins and better profitability, the current market conditions pose substantial challenges, much like other export-focused industries such as IT. As a company, we are actively working on adjusting our business strategy to align with the current market conditions. Our efforts include, point number one, tightening our focus on the Indian market to achieve a 50-50 ratio between the USA and Indian market, all the while maintaining our presence in the highly profitable U.S. market. Number two, shifting more of our manufacturing operations to India and optimizing our U.S.-based operations accordingly. It's important to note that this ongoing effort to realign our strategy and reduce business risk is a work in progress and may take a couple of quarters to yield tangible results. In the interim, it's crucial to view this quarter's performance within the above context and the above-mentioned near-term challenges. Now, let's move on to... Uh, on the performance in last quarter in detail. In Q2 FI24, our revenue from operations is rupees 201 crores, a decrease of 17.9% year on year, and a decrease of 14.5% quarter on quarter. In H1 FI24, our revenue from operations is rupees 436 crores, a decrease of 1% year on year. Looking at margins, our gross margin is rupees 75 crores down by 14% year-on-year and an increase of 7% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Gross margin as a percentage stood at 37.2% and increase of 173 basis points year-on-year -year and 303 basis points quarter-on-quarter. -quarter. Moving on to EBITDA, EBITDA is at 12.6 crores, down 56% year-on-year and a decrease of 22% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. Look at EBITDA margin. That stood at 6.3%, a decrease of 541 basis points on a yearly basis and 62 basis points on quarter on quarter basis. Moving on to PAT, PAT stood at 7.3 crores, down 51% year on year and an increase of marginal 3% quarter on quarter basis. PAT margin is at 3.5%, a decrease of 235 basis points year on year and an increase of 59 basis points quarter on quarter basis. Coming to IPO fund utilization, uh, as you know, we raised funds about six months back. Our approved IPO funds utilization consists of debt repayment of 145 crores, working capital requirements of 90 crores, and general corporate purpose requirements of 63.5 crores post issue expenses. We have fully utilized all our IPO funds that have been made available. Uh, GCP of 64.4 crores, which is worked out based on estimated cost of issue of 20.6 crores. The BRLMs have reworked and earmarked 21.57 crores for the issue expenses and transferred an amount of 298.43 crores into the monitoring agency account, which has been fully utilized. 
Utilizing a mix-up of IPO and company-generated funds, we have repaid approximately INA 200 crores of our outstanding debt in the Indian entity. And as of today at the group level, by end of this quarter, so this last quarter, we are left approximately about 100 crores of debt in our U.S. subsidiary CNA. Our Indian uh, entities are almost fully destroyed. Moving on to the balance sheet side, our working capital days is 151 days in Q2 FI24, comprising of 112 days of inventory, 65 days of receivables, and 26 days of payables. Encouragingly, we are witnessing initial indicators of decline in working capital demands as the supply chain situation gradually normalizes. The once upward trajectory of inventory uh, has reached a stabilization point. Balancing the imperative of working capital efficiency along with our growth objectives presents a complex challenge. We will do our best to manage and maintain the balance without compromising growth. I must add that while we are focused on growth, working capital cycle may fluctuate in line with customer requirements, including strict delivery timelines, testing new prototypes for customers, etc. We continue to focus on reducing our working capital and with the current headwinds in our key market, we expect to fluctuate in the short term and hope to achieve a reduction of 10 to 15 years over the next 6 to 12 months. Coming to cash position, as of 31st October, we have approximately about 125 crores of cash in terms of both cash, bank balance and investment. Out of this, INR 50 crores is earmarked for investments in our US subsidiary CNR to prepay some costlier source of funds there. And the balance 75 crores approximately will be meant for surplus as a reserve and growth capital. Additionally, we prefer to keep the existing working capital lines available, amounting to INR 185 crores. This additional question should allow us to aggressively bid for and execute larger orders which are in our pipeline which are already talked about and also being open for any inorganic growth opportunities. In summary, our Q2 FI24 performance was characterized by significant growth in the domestic business in spite of the U.S. job growth and the related fixed cost. We hope to achieve the lower end of the guidance with a cautious outlook and it's based on the U.S. market resurgence and a strong domestic market outlook. Thus, in terms of FI24, we expect the H2 will be stronger than H1. With respect to margins in the upcoming quarter, in spite of the headwinds, with measures like saving interest costs, optimization of manufacturing operation, and cost rationalization in US, which our CEO talked about, margins will be under pressure in the near term, but we are hopeful of maintaining or achieving the margins similar to that of the FI23 level. With this, I request the moderator to open the floor for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question today will come from Nabi Farani of Bastion Research. Please go ahead. Oh, hello, am I audible? Yes, uh, Nabi, you're yeah. audible. Can you hear us all right? Yes, yes, perfectly fine. Yeah, so thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, firstly, yeah. it's encouraging to see a gross margin expansion. And uh, so, so wanted to understand uh, around the sustainability part of this as well as what is expected to drive the same going forward if it's sustainable. Yeah, uh, uh, I'll repeat the question. Just Subramanian here, you, you talked about the gross margins and you talked about sustainability of the gross margin. Is it right? That's the question? Right, right, right. That's what I want to understand. Yeah. yeah. So let me answer that. Uh, we have achieved a margin about 37.5%, which is obviously good. Um, what we like to uh, say is this is uh, this quarter has been uh, characterized by good margins in terms of couple of service business as well. The long run, I think uh, we've been consistent in saying uh, 33 to 35 percent is something which we will look at the number okay, in, in terms of the gross margin. This time has been uh, much better, but we cannot take it as a long run uh, average. That's helpful. 
Uh, and third, second, in the last question which I had was that the growth in the Indian business which we saw this time was around 16%. Now, uh, if I if I see this in the context of the uh, you know current industry positioning, this this growth looks slightly on the lower side. So, can you give us some understanding uh, on this as well as uh, how do you see the future outlook here? That's all. Thank you. Uh, absolutely, Navid. Uh, this is uh, Kunamad here. Uh, see, historically, we've been an export uh, business. If you go back um, three or four years, we were uh, uh, 70, 75% export and 20, 25% India. Uh, to be honest, um, the, the potential of India was realized in the last, uh, I would say, six to 12 months, we have act where we are actively pursuing uh, uh, Indian customers uh, in, the longer, in the longer term. So that's why you, you're start, starting to see the growth uh, actually uh, grow significantly uh, now and it will grow significantly as India is doing extremely well compared to the global economies. Did that answer your question, Navi? So we re started a little bit late uh, to getting into the Indian market. We, are, we, are, we were primarily an export-driven business. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the understanding. Uh, wish you all the best and uh, happy Diwali. Happy Diwali to you too, Navi. Our next question today will come from Renu Dai of IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon, team. Uh, my first question is um, if you can just share more details about the finance. If you can split the financial performance between India and U.S., um, you did mention about revenue, but how was it at the EBITDA and PBT level? So what was the EBITDA uh, loss from the U.S. business um, in the console numbers? And PBT loss. Okay, so uh, in, in terms of Reno, uh, the Subramanian here, I'll I'll try and take the question. Okay. Uh, uh, in, in terms of Indian U.S. business, uh, Indian U.S. manufacturing business, that's something which we don't publish. But just a, uh, a broad brush numbers in terms of uh, allocating cost based on that, the yeah. Indian manufacturing margins uh, remain EBITDA is about 12 to 13 percent in terms of EBITDA, and PAT is about 90 10 percent okay and uh, we have achieved about a 15 crores profit in terms of india manufacturing business in terms of the quarter uh, 15 uh, what's the sorry i missed the number 15 crores okay 15 crores yeah yeah okay so um, uh, in terms of the u.s manufacturing uh, as um, kb talked about and uh, i also indicated okay there is a drop in sales and uh, the fixed cost is higher so that's into losses, and what you're seeing is a net impact about 7.28 crores in terms of consolidated profit, okay? So overall, I think uh, the U.S. business in terms of both EBITDA and at PAT levels continue to remain healthy and profitable, and the business model, what we want to continue and sustain on, and it's a U.S. manufacturing business uh, which we need to focus on, and uh, we have started work on that. It will take a couple of quarters to yield results, but that's what we want to continue in terms of onboarding customers in U.S. and then moving on to India, which is the way we should continue to make profit there. Got it. And cumulatively for the first half of the year, what was the loss, uh, net loss from the U.S. business? Uh, again, uh, broadly it's about 15 crores. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, so yeah, effectively, the asking... yeah. Sorry? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, please. Yeah. So this almost seven to eight crores kind of quarterly loss, which this business is generating um, after the various cost out actions that you have un undertaken in two Q and which you plan to do in second half. Uh, what are your targeted uh, guidelines for bringing down the losses in the next two quarters? Assuming things in the U.S. Uh, remain the way they are, or may worsen in the third quarter. Okay, so uh, I think we did talk about the measures which we are taking. The measures are at two levels. One is looking at the operating cost and fixed cost, personal cost coming down, and also moving some of the production from US to India. So it's a, and as you know, moving production does take time in terms of a product. We need to work with the customer. So we have started the process, and the effect of that will be felt over next one to two quarters. Okay. On a, on a consolidated basis, we, we hope to achieve the margins of what we have achieved last year, and that's what our target is um, in, in terms of moving forward. So, Renu, if I can add, yeah. sure. if I can add to um, 
what we're trying to do is uh, reduce, uh, optimize our um, uh, personal costs, which is very high in the U.S. At the same time, move some of our existing customers um, uh, to India who have been there with us, and because the U.S. costs are rising, not for us, for for a lot of uh, for everybody in the U.S. So that transition is also happening. So it's twofold: one is reducing costs, one is transfer of products, and we intend to keep uh, only clean energy product manufacturing uh, in the U.S. Uh, 50% of our customers agree, the other 50 we are in the process of uh, uh, making them agree, let's put it that way. Okay, so it's a work in process. And what is the estimated reduction in cost for the U.S. operations that we have in our mind, or which we are targeting fixed over I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't uh, give you, uh, I don't want to give a number, but <laughs> it's a sense. Got it, surely. Uh, second, if uh, while you've uh, highlighted entry into automotive EV business, um, so um, can you share a bit more details in terms of what applications are we getting within the EV portfolio? You mentioned about charging solution for the EV major. And by when do we see revenues kicking in from this customer? And um, will this be parked under the clean energy segment or the industrial business for us? I'll answer the last bit uh, initially, if that's okay, Renu. Uh, it will be parked under our clean energy business because we've been doing that. Uh, uh, if it's EV, we are doing that. We are actually um, doing all the pieces for the vehicle, okay? Um, so uh, any electronics part, it's an end-to-end um, uh, solution with three or four different products uh, going into the vehicle. And um, we hope to start... Uh, the, the initial runs in Q4, and we have secured orders for the next 12 months. So when you mentioned you're doing everything, is everything relating to the powertrain or also other electronics, um, including infotainment, or, lighting, and other solutions for the four-wheeler? So it, it, okay, I know. Uh, I want. To, I don't want to say the four, three, or two-wheeler, but. Um, uh, it's uh, three or four different boxes for the vehicle. Got it. It's, it's so not. It's not important. On a box basis. Exactly. All of it is box build. Sure. Thirdly, on good. the CDAC development which you have shared, uh, so just trying to understand the revenue potential from this this um, initiative of Make in India. And recently, one of the other leading EMS company had also announced um, getting approvals with CDAC for uh, one of the supercomputing machines under the same uh, mission of localizing, uh, localizing these computing machines in India. So, just want to understand Avalon's role here, the opportunity, addressable market, and um, in your view, how many other vendors are working with CDAC for the same solution? So from what I understand, uh, I'm, I cannot speak for CDAC. It's only going to be three vendors, and you know the other two uh, is what we understand. We've been working with CDAC for the last four years. Uh, since um, uh, our entry uh, aggressively into the Indian market has been in the last year, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we're looking at, uh, I mean, the, the target numbers is all over the place. I cannot pin to a number. You may have a better number on it, but it could be a three-way split uh, in that case, or it could be three vendors trying to support what they can. But can this become like a $5 billion, uh, business portfolio for us in the next three to four years? That's a difficult it's, it's the choice the in how they... Of this, how, uh, IT products vertical for us. Yeah, so, uh, because it's servers and it's higher end, that's why our interest, okay? Yeah. And um, and since we are vertically integrated, we do a lot of the pieces internally. And we have done Prodhra 1, uh, lot of, apart from the PCP, we have done all the parts for them uh, internally. Uh, Rudra 2 is coming up. I think that's where the scale is going to come. Um, so, I'm hoping that um, uh, we get a better understanding on the scale and scope uh, as the government decides what they want to do with it. Because the whole IT policy uh, the different, is in different stages today. Once the clarity comes is when um, they make an India piece. Um, I don't think it's going to be a $5 billion opportunity, to be honest. Billion rupee opportunity, sir, not dollars. Sorry. Okay. 
they could be. When you said five million, I apologize for that. Yeah. So. Uh, Realistic number, I thought so. <laughs> okay, that could be. Uh, I would say, yeah, that's that's possible. I heard it's a uh, billion. Uh, no, no, for no, some I'm reason. not talking in dollar terms. Sorry for that. And uh, <laughs> lastly, um, uh, while we spoke about all the new opportunities and the restructuring uh, underway in the U.S., uh, what would you like to comment in terms of the revised uh, guidance for fiscal 24? Net margins, you have mentioned, you want to target same levels as last year. But in terms of revenue growth, how should we look at the year and a bit of margin? See, as our focus is a, a three-year journey, and um, 25 and 26 are looking really uh, strong today. Apart from this, uh, we have added another seven customers, uh, one in the rail segment, you know, two in the industrial segment, one more division of one of our existing customers in the air segment. So we feel very confident of the future. The immediate question mark for us is how soon will the U.S. market come back? There are different uh, views on it, and we believe that um, some of the inventory correction that's happening is, uh, is very much underway, and we may positively see all these customers come back in the near term. But it's, it's a toss of a coin when they're going to come back. So I believe that um, that is the crux of where uh, the range will be. That's why I said we are on the lower end of our, expect, uh, our guidance. With a little negative bias, that could change drastically if one of our customers is back in production. And saying all this, we believe we have not lost any customer through this whole process. You know, it's just wait and <laughs> watch for the business to come back. And these are customers who are very consistent uh, with us for the last five or six years. Sure, and just if you can remind us what has been the lower end of the guidance. Maybe I've missed that number. Uh, yeah, uh, Raina, this is Subraman here. Uh, in, in terms of the revenue guidance, we have talked about 15 to 25 percent. And uh, as uh, our CEO said, uh, we are hopeful of achieving the lower end of the guidance. Uh, again, the key thing is to be when the U.S. market comes back, because we continue to be focused on the export focus market. Yeah. Get it. So maybe 10 to 15 may be a more uh, realistic number to expect uh, for the current year. I, I, I leave that uh, for you to work through it. But, you know, the U.S. economic macro conditions are difficult under pressure. So uh, this is what I uh, hope and we are working towards it. Done. Uh, thanks much and uh, best wishes. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Renu. Our next question today will come from me, Jane, of Motowa, Oswa. Please go ahead. Thanks, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, meet. Uh, uh, yeah. Welcome. Hi, sir. Yeah. Hi, hi. Uh, I just wanted to understand the end user lift right now. You can see clean energy. Clean energy lift has been going down, and the few one also has witnessed sluggishness. So earlier in a phone call, we said that our uh, clean energy mix is going at a very fast pace and will grow always be around 35%. This 35% is including the new orders of EV, I guess, thinking about, or it is entirely the US orders. So it's a uh, mix. It's it's a mix. Um, so we have uh, two of our larger EV customers where we. Um, uh, predicted that it's going to go to 35. We still believe over a period of time it's going to go to 35 percent. And um, uh, the uh, EV is an is an additional part to that. Does that answer that question? Uh, yes, yes, yes. And next is on the aerospace part. So, uh, can you the ballpark uh, growth? How how did the aerospace division did in this quarter and the first half and the new order which we talked about the uh, factory transfer and the plastic tooling, how are they progressing? So, so the uh, the usual um, uh, aero business is going uh, relatively the same. The wiper blade, as uh, we have started uh, the processes to, um, to get that into production, we see that coming on board in Q2 of next year. And the number of wiper blades, I think there's close to 200, the first set will um, will start to go through uh, in the early part of next year. Uh, the other um, uh, good uh, opportunity we have is in um, 
not opportunity. We have already uh, FIA has approved uh, for cables in planes. Okay, and these are in the cabin in the cabin space. And secondly, a new customer, a different division of one of our customers, has also given us um, uh, first articles um, to be approved um, uh, for cables. And these are is a substantial piece once the uh, approvals come through. So for metal, we went to plastics, and now we are in cables, uh, mostly in the cabin and some part in the engine. Understood, understood. Uh, and the uh, last question is on the community, uh, industrial side, industrials and the order book side. So uh, current order book of almost 200 crores. Can you provide a broad mix of how much is uh, to for the US and the India business? See, our goal always has been uh, going into the future uh, to do 50% India and 50% um, US because of the reasons you see today, you know, uh, the econ economic changes on both sides. So capture both. So our, our intention will always be to get to the 50-50 um, mix. Uh, in the last quarter, I think the orders um, from India were much larger uh, in comparison to the U.S. Uh, but again, we are getting uh, six or seven new customers coming in in the U.S. And uh, though the economy is slow, we are acquiring customers. And we are also invested in... Uh, uh, three new um, regions uh, for our sales folks with um, with new uh, new hires on business development. Though we are reducing costs, uh, optimizing costs um, in other regions, we are still investing in business development. We are a firm believer when uh, the U.S. economy comes back, we would have much more to deliver. Okay. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. You're welcome, Neil. Our next question today will come from Karan Sanwal of Nidashe. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Hello, Karan. Yes, you are audible. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Um, yeah, I have a couple of questions. The first question would be, uh, there is an uh, increase in, uh, you know, on the working capital side, there is an increase in inventory days and there is a reduction in table days which is causing our networking capital to go up. So I wanted to understand uh, like uh, when do we expect them to uh, stabilize and what will be the you know the targeted level of networking capital days uh, that we are internally targeting? Yeah. Uh, Subraman here and I'll take that uh, in terms of as you rightly said networking is broadly flat between last quarter and this quarter. Um, in, in terms of guidance we wanted to look at uh, reduction about 10 to 15 days uh, in terms of working capital. But considering the market condition in terms of U.S. pressure uh, and also the customer pressure in terms of orders, uh, it remained broadly flat. But we continue to be hopeful of achieving what we guidance gave in terms of 10 to 15 days in the next 6 to 12 months, okay? which will be essentially then by, led by reduction in inventory days and also pushing up for payable days a little more. Okay. In the long run, we hope to achieve 120 days, which is what uh, we were pre-COVID, and in the medium term, not in the short term, medium term, we hope to achieve the same as well. Okay. Uh, and also, in the, uh, continuing on the question that the last participant asked, uh, I wanted to understand the mix of order book between segments. If you could you know, broadly highlight which uh, segment is contributing more to the order book, or the current order book. Um, today, I would believe it will be uh, clean energy and followed by industrial. Uh, if you could uh, give a ballpark number, like uh, how much uh, portion would, we, uh, would it contribute, the clean energy and industrial part? I would say uh, these two will be north of 60% together. Okay. Uh, thanks for the clarity. and. Uh, uh, one uh, last bit of question. I, I understand that uh, many many participants have already highlighted, but just wanted to understand like uh, uh, we, when we are when we are saying that we are targeting in a bit of margin of uh, you know uh, uh, similar to the last year, uh, we actually need to uh, do around 15, 16 percent EBITDA margin for the for the H2 as compared to H1. Uh, so just uh, wanted to, like are we confident enough to you know achieve that uh, target? For the next uh, next half of the 
financial year? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Brahman, here and I'll take that. Uh, um, as you said, yeah. Right. So, in terms of our uh, focus is of is on achieving the bottom line in terms of the PAT and the uh, profit margins. So, our uh, focus and endeavor will be to achieve the same and typically our H2 is stronger than H1, okay. So what we believe is the, the market should come back, uh, though we cannot predict the exact time, the market should come back and we are also working on reduction in cost in terms of uh, personal cost and moving some of the operations into India. So all of that should give uh, some more savings in terms of the cost, coupled with savings in interest cost, we are hopeful of achieving the bottom line in terms of what we achieved last year and, and H2 has to be stronger than H1 as I rightly said, yeah. Okay, uh, just uh, last question, uh, what, uh, you know, you are saying that uh, uh, the Indian market is uh, contributing to the growth, so I just want to understand like uh, which are the main uh, drivers of growth in the Indian market uh, as of now? Yeah, so, uh, if I can take yeah, that. Yeah. So, uh, the Indian manufacturing, when we say 75% of uh, Indian manufacturing, it is some of the export as well as the Indian market, okay, okay. together, okay. okay. So, uh, uh, from the manufacturing standpoint, the growth is going to come from uh, clean energy as well as um, uh, the industrial side. And uh, future, uh, as you very well know, we've been um, in the rail industry, for quite some time, we are seeing substantial projects for my existing customers, as well as we have um, signed a new global major um, in the rail segment. So we hope uh, as India goes storing rail um, uh, streams ahead, we'll be a very, very strong part of it in the future. Okay, uh, great. Thank you so much and all the very best for the next uh, years. Thank you. Again, it is star and then one to ask a question. Our next question is from Neil McCarney of Bala and Barca. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. So most of my questions were answered, so just I have a couple of questions over here. So you just now mentioned that the real industry, you believe that will become the substantial part of your business going ahead, that will grow. So what, do you expect uh, this also to be in the 10 to 20 percent or how do you expect this? Can you throw some color on that? So historically, uh, uh, we, we we look at mobility, which is auto, uh, air, and uh, uh, rail. Uh, but EVs we count in um, the clean energy, you know, just for the groupings. So we believe uh, rail today is a substantial portion of what we do. And with the India Growth Story, rail will continue to be a substantial portion of what we do. Uh, we are in um, railway interlocking signaling, we are in braking, uh, we are uh, hopefully getting into Kavash, um, and as well as um, uh, parts for our customers for the Vande Bharat. Uh, thank you, sir. And the second question is, uh, historically, sir, what has been your trend like H1 between H1 and H2? Uh, can you just clarify that? Uh, H1, again, uh, it, it varies, but broadly in the range about 45, 55, uh, but uh, typically uh, if U.S. is on more recession, it can be much more stronger, but that's the normal number. Right. Yeah. And uh, uh, the recent customers acquisition which you have done, be it in the U.S. or be it in India, so um, majorly when do you expect these customers to ramp up and contribute a significant portion, like how much time will it take for them to ramp up? So ideally, it's you know um, four to six months. Uh, in the air sector is uh, is a bit longer. Air in the rail sector is a bit longer. If it's an in, uh, industrial slash communication, uh, and I believe uh, in the EV side, we should be in production uh, four to six months. So I would say late part of Q4, and primarily a lot of these projects will kick in full stream in 25. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Our next question today will come from Ashish Rawat of MS Quadsoft. Please go ahead. 
Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, so my first oh, question you. is uh, regarding the equity, uh, which uh, went down from 71 to 50 percent. So what was the reason, sir, and uh, where we utilize that money? This is the first. Sir, my second question is regarding hydrogen electrolyzer. You have mentioned in your opening remarks. Uh, I want to know about this particular uh, segment about product in terms of number. How, how in future, how, uh, how big this concept is, sir? I have two questions, sir. Please. Okay. So on the equity part, I'll take it. Uh, I think you are referring to uh, uh, usage of OFS money, okay, which got used between uh, uh, June and uh, September. Basically, this reminds uh, in our bank uh, uh, account and then subsequently paid off to the selling shareholders, okay. But otherwise, in terms of equity, there's no reduction. Yeah. Okay. So we've been working on the, yes. on the hydrogen project for the last two years, doing various components. It's a very large system, um, and it's a very expensive system in, in a normal uh, uh, running into lax. Uh, so we're building the first 100 um, uh, this year, maybe 60 to 100 units this year, and uh, the projections are anywhere from 300 to 600 uh, the following years. Uh, sir, we have seen you recently participated in India Mobile Congress. Sir, what is uh, uh, our contribution into 5G and 6G networks? Yeah, see, we've been working with various, uh, like uh, I mentioned earlier in the call, uh, we have uh, the last six months to a year is when we have truly uh, entered the uh, Indian market. We are very focused outside the country, even that was uh, export was the key, and with the uh, Indian um, economy booming and Indian market expanding uh, with China plus one and uh, things. So we believe, uh, we have worked with various customers on 5G, especially getting them from uh, PCB layout to uh, prototype and we've never taken uh, uh, company completely into production as it's evolving today. We see a big opportunity in certain parts of uh, 5G. Uh, that is why we were in, in the conference. Uh, it is multifaceted, and I hope uh, that will bear fruit uh, in the future. All right, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Our next question today will come from Rahul Gatari of Hypong Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I'm not sure if you answered this question earlier on profitability. So I want to understand, you know, the drop in EBITDA margin uh, in this particular quarter, is this all mainly because of the U.S. operations or are there, uh, you know, sectors or segment contribution which are increased, which are impacted uh, your um, overall profitability? So, yeah. Yeah, um, Subraman here, Rahul. Uh, if you look at the gross margin, it has uh, gone up. So essentially, it's not a problem with the margins of the customers. It's been essentially led by the uh, leverage impact, operating leverage impact, which is drop in the uh, top line and the fixed cost being there, which automatically leads to the drop in EBITDA. So it's not to do with uh, uh, specific customers. It's more to do with the uh, operations and uh, the higher fixed cost, okay? And it's uh, dominated by the U.S. market where the top line did go down, and the, but the fixed cost remained higher, so that's been the pressure on. You did talk about the uh, growth. Uh, is it possible you can give us a contribution of uh, U.S. operation, uh, U.S. revenue in the 200 crore that you've done in this quarter? Sorry, can you repeat the question? What you asked? Sorry. Well, uh, yeah. US revenue percentage. So, uh, as of now, we do 75% of our production is done in India and 25 is done in the US, if that answers your question. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Yeah. If there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference back over to Pramika Nair for closing comments. 
Yes, um, thank you uh, to all the participants and particularly the management for giving us an opportunity to host uh, the call. Thank you very much, sir, and uh, wish you all the very best, sir. Happy Diwali to all, and um, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to talk to all of you, uh, and uh, wish you a very good evening. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Dom Capital Advisors Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.